Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Uh, you guys have heard me say this over and over again, but I just love going to conferences, man. I like meeting people. I like seeing people. I actually like people. Uh, and I'm hanging out at this conference not very long ago. And there's this weird group of people who just didn't seem to fit the normal sort of box that we put wholesalers in or product people in financial services. And it's called trust and will. And I walked over there and I'm like, what, who are you guys? Why? Like you guys, I don't remember you had some cool swag or you were doing something that was just not normal. And I love not normal because I'm so tired of going to conferences and seeing the same old crap, the same old stuffy old white guy in a suit that probably doesn't fit him as well as it should, you know, trying to hock me as tchotchkes. You guys are like hanging out and having a good time. You're wearing t-shirts, these cool trust and will shirts. You had something cool on the back anyway. So anyway, everybody, I wanted to have trust and will on the show. Number one, because anybody who's doing marketing differently and getting people's attention means that it's working. And number two, after I talk to these guys, I'm like, okay, you guys are doing something cool here. And I think it would behoove our audience to know about who you are and what you do, because it's a great way for them to stop being the best kept secret in their area. But most importantly, it is a great opportunity for people to offer products and services they might not be offering because they didn't know that they could. So Ryan, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it. And I enjoyed meeting you just as much as you enjoyed meeting us. You had, uh, So well, you guys had something cool on your shirts. Do you remember what that was? I'm trying to picture it in my mind's eye and I'm I'm not remembering. You had well, these, it's a trust and will on the front and then on the back there was something. I, I can't remember either. Maybe we have two different kinds of shirts. One, obviously the one I'm wearing here, whichever side I'm on, um, trust and will. And then a cool trust and will shirt, which just has a bigger brand on it. Maybe that was the thing. Just stands out a little bit. I've had family family members ask if they could buy a shirt just because they thought it looked cool. I, I don't know if they're being nice or if they actually liked it, but they seem to enjoy it. You know, a little bit of both, dude. Who cares, right? Uh, but but a good brand makes, you know, that gets people's attention. And you're called trust and will, which are huge things that a financial services professionals have been wrestling with forever. Uh, but and that's actually where you kind of cut your teeth. So do you mind telling everybody a little bit about who you are and why you're where you are? Absolutely. So Ryan um, and I was from the advisor world doing comprehensive planning, was a planner for about eight years under LPL Financial, didn't have my own book, but was helping an OSJ build his client facing, specializing in retirees, special needs planning, getting into the thick of it. And I always found that estate planning was really, really important. And when I finally met Andreas, the head of the advisor channel, we connected actually as me as an advisor. And as I started using Trust and Will, I actually started speaking to him after knowing him for about a year and found that there was a position open. And I love marketing and I love working with advisors just as much, if not more than being one. So I found that this fit me really well because I could speak the language. I got to scratch the marketing itch. And it's just been a, a lot of fun to be able to provide that extra value. Let's talk about that value. So as an advisor, what did you see and how did you use Trust and Will to actually be a more comprehensive financial planner? I, I, I know that over and over again, uh, financial services professionals consistently say that they're comprehensive financial planners, but dude, they're not, right? I mean, they really not. How does this and how did you recognize what Trust and Will did to help you provide more comprehensive services to your OSJ's clients? There are a lot of problems with that come along with estate planning. And I think even when you're comprehensive and you're talking about all areas, it's, I think the most comprehensive planners actually get clients to take action. They hold them accountable and they make sure things get done. That's the difference between somebody just bringing it up and handing a plan or a piece of paper and actually making that come to life, making that piece of paper worth it. So that's a huge value of a financial planner, right? Is that the accountability factor that comes with it. And you especially need that with estate planning because historically less than 60% of people get it done. Attorneys don't have their own documents. 
financial advisors don't have their own documents, clients. It's not just the client problem. This is a nationwide problem. And that's where we found that this fit really well because advisors are dying to be more comprehensive and hold clients accountable and provide that value. We're talking about insurance. We're talking about investments and we're talking about taxes and estate planning used to just be something you can refer. And what we do is allow you to bring it home and control that process a little bit more with being an online resource. And I think that's what really helped me be more comprehensive was I gave people another option out of the same old, go see an attorney. And then I see them a year later and I'm like, did you go? And they're like, nope. And then I'm like, all right, we'll go see an attorney. And I felt like I lost control of that process. And that's why I really like what we do. Okay. Expand on that. I love the idea of the advisor being in control because the advisor really should be that quarterback quarterback of that team, right? They should be the one who's coordinating all of the different things that are happening. Elaborate on that. So let's start breaking apart trust and will and what you guys actually offer and how advisors can plug into your system. Absolutely. And getting specific, we actually have an advisor dashboard. And what that is, is kind of a home base for advisors to be able to control the relationship between the client and making sure their estate planning documents get done. On this dashboard, you get to see the plan that they chose, what step of the process they're in, and when they're completed, the actual documents themselves. So what I keep hearing from a lot of advisors is, you know, I try to send people to attorneys and it's too expensive. They don't want to go see another person. Maybe they don't operate well and I'm not hearing back from them. I don't get the documents. Even when it's completed, I don't always know unless I check with the client. These are all things that I think we can help with and facilitate to give more control of the advisor to say, I can see everything they're doing and now I can see whether they started. And that's where I can add that extra layer of accountability to make sure this really gets done. I love the dashboard idea. In fact, I, I went through uh, some of the stuff on your website and I don't remember somebody early on, uh, cause you and I have been uh, working at getting this in the can for the podcast for a while since I met you in, I think December, or Feb February of this year. Um, and so it was really neat being able to kind of see underneath the hood and see what you guys offer. We've had estate planning attorneys on the show before, uh, and I've coached and consulted so many advisors who tried to work with estate planning attorneys. And Ryan, what they would always say is the estate planning attorney would point to their desk and say, I have a drawer full of trusts and that have never been funded, that the client never took any action on. And it's because of that lack of control. And I know one of the greatest personality traits of the best advisors is that they want to maintain control and they love that level of detail. But let's switch gears a little bit here. How do you think and how do you guys position this dashboard and this, uh, this opportunity for advisors to maintain the control as a good marketing play? Because this is a marketing podcast. So let's talk about that a little bit. For sure. And I love how this ties into marketing. And there's some direct and indirect things that I think happen. The more comprehensive we are, the more somebody gets done, the more value they feel from us, the more likely we are to be referable. So I think word of mouth, as we know, whether we're doing this on social media, whether we're doing this on a podcast, whatever, we want it to hit somebody's ears and we want them talking about us. Somebody hearing about us from another person is where I think the best business comes from. So that's where I think marketing ties in from the, from the fact that being more comprehensive gives you an opportunity to provide that extra value so they start speaking about you, as well as it gives you something to talk about online, to put on your website, to differentiate, and to be that one-stop shop. As I find people are liking the idea of going to meet one person who can handle more, it's less work for the client on their end, more likely for things to get done, and that's something you can shout from the rooftops. So that's why I love it, because you can now talk about estate planning a lot more than before, because you're a lot more involved in the process. Whereas before, I think we always stuck in the small box of investments because we weren't able to do anything outside of the referral. Now we get to speak a lot more about it. And the more comprehensive you are, the more content you have from your meetings, more stones uncovered, more things you can talk about. And estate planning is a super valuable tool because it's something everybody can use. And that's why I think it's really valuable. Yeah. Wow. So much with what you just said there. When you're offering and being more comprehensive, that gives you more content to share. And we know that content marketing is the only marketing left. And I know that you and I are kindred spirits when it comes to that. I want to take this in a little bit different direction. And I guess I didn't really think about this 
as I was preparing for the show, but I remember working with an advising office and, and they actually had like an in-house estate planning attorney and the clients, they would all do it together, right? So the estate planning attorney was there and the advisor was there and they were getting the documents done. And one of the things that the advisor always told me was, I wish that I could make my clients feel like they feel when they get done with an estate planning attorney or do, working with a will, like a trust or a will. When you were an advisor, did you experience that? When you were doing real comprehensive planning, did you see that the relationship changed because you were talking about things that are hard to talk about, but after they're talked about and actually actions are taken on those difficult conversations that the relationship changed? Did you notice that? A hundred percent. And I always say it's very difficult to get estate planning done because it's kind of like insurance where we're asking somebody to buy something that they hope they never use in essence. But I always found that when you push them through and got them to do it, it lifted a weight that they didn't even know they felt. They didn't know they were carrying it until it was gone. Something that was bothering them. And it really is, you know, when you look at somebody, say a young family who has a child and minors just should not hold money. So usually you have your beneficiaries and maybe you're talking to your brother-in-law or sister about, hey, dole the money out like this. But families can have trouble and, uh, and argue and things like that. And when you get into the documents, I think it brings all the problems that could have happened. So it really introduces and educates somebody to realize, wow, I didn't know how important this was. And now that it's done, I feel really good about doing it. Talk about increasing your level of referability. Talk about being able to communicate a client story using a podcast, a video, a blog post, a social media post, and really be able to say, here is what my client said. Now, you can say this from a compliance standpoint. Here's what my client said when they got done doing their will and their trust. That's not saying this is how they felt working with me as a financial advisor because that's promissory and whatever. There are some great ways that this actually can help you from a compliance standpoint too. And in you're, you kind of have your hands in a lot of stuff, Ryan, which is one of the reasons I'm so happy that you're on the show, because not only were you an advisor, but you love marketing. And then you also love what you're doing at Trust and Will. How does this work from a compliance standpoint? Because there've been a couple of things that you've said where I'm like, yeah, there's a couple of BDs that probably aren't going to let that happen. So how do you guys work with established organizations so that advisors can offer your products and services without breaking some of the compliance no-nos of saying, well, I don't offer legal advice? Yes. Great question. And it's always good to check with compliance. I always say that for anybody who wants to know or for anybody who wants the, the truth of their organization, because it's true from BDs to independents to RIAs to wirehouses. Everybody has a different level of what they're allowed to do. And through estate planning, I look at us in two ways because there's actually two ways to implement us. We do offer the ability for advisors to pre-purchase estate plans and include that into their value. That's something that I find usually runs through compliance. Otherwise, the way I look at us is like you're referring to an online office. So it's just another referral that can also go next to an attorney name. So for example, plenty of Northwestern Mutual Advisors working with us right now, whether someone consider that a more constrictive BD, but as long as you put us next to an attorney, right? They want, they want three attorneys or so, two attorneys and maybe us, we're just another option available. I find that to be the most compliant, friendly way for anybody, all the way up to pre-purchasing the plan, including it, and sitting right in on the meeting. Pre-purchasing the plan. Uh, I'm, I am not entirely understanding what that means. Can you elaborate on that? For sure. We can, you can actually purchase an estate plan on behalf of your clients. So when you're going through, obviously, you can introduce the clients to go through the trust and will process, and they can pay with their own credit card. The advisor can also pay for this for them and then include it in the value add as you get a financial planning fee is where I see it more commonly. So maybe your $2,000 fee goes to $2,500 and you're including a basic will package as well as the accountability factor. That just seems really valuable. I, I, so I'm thinking about all of these CFPs who podcast with us now, these, these very, very comprehensive you know, ad, uh, advisors who have deep relationships with other professionals, how does this play if you have a good relationship with an estate planning attorney? Do, do, they, do they like this? What, what has been your experience there? I always like to describe it like this. Uh, what if it was a term insurance policy 
What if it was something where something not scalable, something you'll do for them to provide value, but something where you don't make much money. Quite frankly, what we're doing is pretty straightforward estate planning. So I believe that most attorneys appreciate the complex, just like an advisor might, because more work can mean more money. So I don't feel like we're taking anything away from those relationships. And if anything, we're helping them because then they get to do what they want in terms of stay within complexity and build more important cases, take care of their, their A clients. And where trust and will can fit in is to streamline the process where somebody just needs a basic will or revocable living trust. You don't need to spend three months at the attorney going through their processes, waiting to get the paperwork back. You can get that stuff done now. You can get it funded now. And the advisor can control that. This this whole idea of fiduciary is something that I personally struggle with that that word for for many different reasons. But if you're truly going to do what's best in your client's best interest, which all advisors, I think most ninety nine percent of them are doing, so many of them, right? Uh, they they don't have a solution for their B, C, and D clients. And we all know that they're B, C, and D clients. They need to have a simple will. They need to have a durable power of return. They need to have these things in place. But because they're not wealthy, people aren't offering these products and services to them. So I'm assuming that it's it's uh, reasonably priced. I'm not asking you about your pricing. But it's reasonably priced so that advisors can offer this as a value add to their small, their lower end of their book so that more and more people have this protection in place. Is, is that fair or am I way off? No, that's fair. And, you know, depending on the complexity, and this is, this is what else I'll say. Obviously, I love attorneys. We can't do everything. So we need attorneys. We're never going to be a complete replacement. But on average, we are about 40% of the cost of an attorney that I would say, depending on where they are, maybe 50% of the cost. So I do think for anybody where cost is a big factor, or especially somebody's out of state and you don't know an attorney there, you don't have a center of influence, that's where we really start to plug in. You know, the other thing too, and I know that financial planners know this uh, in their their heart of hearts, is you do a simple plan for somebody, at some point they're going to need a more advanced plan, right? And if they bought a plan from you once, the probability of them buying a financial plan later uh, is much, much higher. And it's going to be the same thing with, with a trust and a will, right? As your estate and your age, your life, your needs, your heirs, all of that change, you are going to need to have more complexity. So it's probably, I would think that estate planning attorneys would love to have the simple stuff taken care of because then they know that they're going to be more likely to purchase the more advanced to state plans later. What do you think of that? Yeah, absolutely. And the thing I'll also say is I think there's this thing that advisors usually say where, you know, you, you put your most effort into somebody who has a million dollars because if you get a referral from them, maybe they have a million dollars. But I've just found that not to be true. And the same way it goes for maybe somebody who you have $50,000 with, you pegged as a D client and they have a second advisor with $500,000. But because you weren't as comprehensive as you could have been or they just didn't want to tell you about it, they left that part out. And now you think you're working with a D client, but it's really an A client that, that isn't pulled all their money over. And that person does have referrals and they do know people. Or that's not also to say that just because somebody has 50,000 or 100,000, they don't know somebody with a million dollars. That's why I think it's so crucial to always provide this value to somebody because we never know who people know or how influential they are or where business is going to come from. It's up to us to be fiduciaries to act on the best on the behalf of the client and do what's right for them and provide that value. So whenever they're thinking about financial planning, when they're talking around the Thanksgiving table at holidays and things like that, you know, they think of us because we gave them time and we gave them advice and we cared about what they thought regardless of the amount of money they is had. coming up next so you guys have built this amazing infrastructure this great dashboard this great foundation where is trust and will going in the next five years trust and will has just acquired easy probate to be able to also handle probate services just like we have documents in all 50 states we're going to probate what you're going to see from us is we're going to we're going to scale to a degree of where we can only provide the best service of course but what, what you're going to see is more complex stuff. And I'm not sure what I'm allowed to deliver, but there is a lot of stuff coming down the line that I'm really excited about in terms of increased distribution options, more customization, things that people are looking for that can be more difficult for an online platform to provide. That's what we're going to be able to provide. What question should I have asked you that I didn't? I think a good question may be, you know, how... Can advisors use estate planning 
to improve their marketing. All right, go take it away. I believe that the conversations that you have with people always uncover content. And this is something I touched on before that I think is just worth going deeper into. I think a lot of advisors, and tell me what your experience is, Matt, talking to plenty of advisors. I have always found that people sit there and they go, what do I say? You know, what do I do? You know, besides where do I post and what platform, it's more like, what do I write about? And I found that whatever you're saying to your clients in the meeting, obviously not personal information, but that value should be pulled back onto social media. It's hard to talk about investments. Usually we're sharing, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we might be in a recession right now. Don't sell. Don't freak out. You know, keep your money there. Here's a chart of the S&P 500. I found that estate planning gives you an, an, uh, just a, a whole bucket of content that you, can, that you can write about in terms of social media, newsletters to your current clients, YouTube videos, wherever you happen to be. It just gives you a whole nother avenue because again, because it's something everybody needs, it can also be a great point to bring somebody in without being like, hey, you got any money? You know, I want to see how much money you got. Let me see your statements. I think we, you know, financial advisors can be scary for people to approach. And when you're speaking about a topic that isn't directly you know, aimed towards how you want to make money, it's a service that you can provide for them on top of that. I really think that helps break the ice and break down those walls and the barriers and helps people come to you and say, oh, you know, I know you're not an attorney, but I heard you talk about estate planning. I wonder what would be valuable for me. And then you can say, well, I need to see the whole picture because I'm a comprehensive planner. Let me see what you have. And then if I can't answer the question, I'll pass you to the right person. And I think that becomes really valuable, whether you're in person with somebody or whether you're online to be able to provide that value to, to prospects and clients alike. Ryan, you just opened a can of worms. Uh, and I don't know if you, you, you want me to uh, address this can of worms, but so you just said a whole bunch of stuff about content and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so does trust and will help me with any content? Do you guys have white papers or ideas or posts that advisors can use to help initiate these conversations using social media? Do you have any sort of scripting or anything like that to help begin this conversation for advisors who never offered these sorts of products and services? Yeah, absolutely. And we provide templates for social media. You can use our logo and put us on your website. Because we have that advisor dashboard, it gives you a custom link that you can share with clients that attaches you to their process so you can see what they're doing through the life of their estate plan. So what I see a lot of advisors do is they'll put us on under their tool section or resources and say, here's trust and will, get started, and that's their button so that they can use it. And that can be valuable for clients as well as lead generation. So we're definitely pri trying to provide everything we can. We have mock newsletters and things. So we provide templates, so you can always customize it if you want to, but they're good. Don't worry. They were written by me and a few other people on the team uh, to make sure that you're speaking the right language, you know, to make sure that you sound like a real person when you're posting this and it's not just a commercial. I think there's definitely ways to speak about, and you know how, how content should be and how we can make it resonate. And that's what we're trying to provide to advisors. We want to provide value without you having to do too much work course, you're going to have to do something. It's new value, you know, and it's something you're going to provide and it will pay you back. I can promise you that whether through referrals or if you're charging directly, but we want to facilitate as much as we can. And we do that through marketing. You know, this, this is, this is the, when you meet somebody and you realize that their brand is on point, that their offering is all like, we just uncovered and uncovered and uncovered, right? And, and when you are thinking about really offering any new product or service in your in your practice that last question is one i always want you to ask do you help me communicate the value of what i'm going to be able to offer to my existing clients and my prospective clients and when the answer is yes that means that that company has really thought about it from soup to nuts. They know what they need to do to make it so that you're going to be successful across the journey. And so many of you listening to this have not been successful in the trust and will component because, again, same thing that, that Ryan said right at the beginning, it's about control. All right, brother. Um, 
So I'm sure that there are people who are going to want to reach out. And, and I'm telling you all right now, you need to reach out. If you're not offering this service now, I don't believe that you're truly being a fiduciary. I know it's very strong wording, but I'm not afraid to say that. This is something you should be doing for every single solitary client. It's the right thing to do, and it's something your clients need. Even if they say no now, it's never a no forever. Uh, and so, uh, Ryan, what, what is the best way for people to reach out? Where should they go? What should they do uh, in order to potentially find out more about what you offer? Yeah, absolutely. I would suggest, while well, everybody can always follow me on LinkedIn, I, I practice what I preach. I believe in marketing and love it. So I'm posting all the time and you'll see a lot of value there. If you really want a direct insight, I would suggest that everybody goes to trustandwill.com slash advisors and you book a demo to see how this integrates with your practice. How does it actually work? What does it look like for advisors? What does it look like for clients? Because once you see the inside, then you're really going to know who belongs there and how tightly you can integrate it into your process. Man, I'm super happy to have met you. And thank you for taking some time on the show. I know that you're crazy busy. You guys are growing exponentially. Um, uh, you know, I know that you're on the road often, uh, you know, at different conferences. I can't wait to see you at a couple here in the fall because conference season is starting to, to ramp back up again. Uh, and your social media is fantastic. You do practice what you preach. Everybody, if you just follow him, which by the way, we're gonna have all of those links in our show notes like we always do. Um, but if you follow him, you're gonna learn a lot, right? That's the cool thing. It's 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 this constant giving of good content, good information to help you feel more confident being able to offer services like what they offer at Trust and Will. And even if you don't use Trust and Will, there's still huge valuable information that Ryan and the team shares that will make it so that you can feel more comfortable having that conversation. And everybody, it's all conversations. That's where everything begins. And that's where all of your referrals will happen. So Ryan, Dude, thank you very much for spending some time with me, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Wonderful podcast. Great energy. Loved meeting you then. Glad to see you again, and can't wait to see you in the future. Yeah. So everybody, here's the thing, right? You have to find different ways to separate yourself from the advisor down the street. One of the best ways to do that is to unapologetically be yourself. If you are yourself, you have no competition because there is nobody else like you. And if you truly, truly want to stop the sales insanity, stop the torment of having to sell to every single solitary person, the best way to do that is to be a truly comprehensive financial planner and offer the products and services that your clients know that they need, and you're going to be the purveyor of that information. If you don't know how to do any of that, there's some great people to follow on social. Ryan happens to be one of them. The other thing is you can join our academy for free. We've got the Pod Rocket Academy that will help you solidify your brand message, maybe potentially even help you start podcasting, but most importantly, create a comprehensive marketing plan so that you can start rising above the noise to be your own loud, because that's what it's all about. Content marketing is the only marketing left. If you don't know how to do it, we can help. And if you really want to see somebody who's doing it well, make sure that you follow Ryan because he's killing it on social. So for everybody at Trust and Will and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Halloran. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you are meant to be.